So, in our previous clip, we created our first light in 3ds Max. Let's now try to understand how the different light types is going to affect our overall lighting. So, I'm going to select the spotlight that we created in the previous clip. And as I showed you before, if we scroll down, we can find the specific parameters for the spotlight. So, let's understand what these settings do. First, we have the show cone checkbox. This option will only affect the 3ds Max interface. It won't change anything in the render. So what this does is that it's going to enable us to see this cone of the light even when the spotlight is not selected. So I'll show you what I mean. I have the show cone checkbox checked and I'm going to deselect the light. As you can see, the cone remains visible in the interface, so it's easier for us to find and see what this light is actually lighting. So this is a very useful feedback resource. If I select the light back and I disable the show cone option, when I deselect the light, the cone will disappear. So let's select this back, scroll down, Next, we have the hotspot and the fall off settings. So basically, if I test render this now, we can see that we have a very clear beginning and end to our spotlight shape. I can see exactly where my cone ends. And that is useful in some situations, but sometimes we don't want this to be as visible as it is right now. So that's what the hotspot and fall off are here for. So let me close this up. Basically, the hotspot is the area of the full intensity of your light. And the fall off is the transition area between completely lit to completely unlit. So if you want softer borders, all you need is a bigger difference between these two values. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. I'm going to increase my fall off area quite a bit. And as you can see, there's a feedback on the viewport for this. So I'm going to increase this quite a bit. And then I'm going to test render again. And as you can see, there's a much softer transition between the completely lit area and the completely unlit area. Also, I'm lighting a wider area. So if I continue to increase this, I'll have softer and softer results to the point it will be hard for a show pinpoint exactly where the hotspot ends. Okay? So this is a very useful resource for blending in different light sources. Also, we have the circle or rectangle shape. So this is pretty self-explanatory. I have a circle shape right now. Let me decrease this fall off. And that means that I have a circle shape in my spot. But if I change this to rectangle, you can see that we have the same principle of a light source that gets wider as it gets further away from the point but still we have now a square shape. So let me test render this so you can see. And we still have the same parameters of hotspot and fall off. So if I increase this again, we're still going to have the same transition. If we have the rectangle option enabled, we're going to enable both of these options down here, which is the aspect and the bitmap fit. So the aspect controls the overall aspect of my rectangle. If it's one, we have a perfect square. If we start to change this, we're going to have a more unproportional rectangle. And we can fit this on a specific bitmap dimension. You just choose the bitmap and it's going to fit those dimensions. Okay? 
the last thing I wanted to show you is the overshoot option. So what the overshoot options does is just ignore the actual light source and it's just going to light your scene from that direction everywhere. So you won't have a visible light source you're going to have a lot of light coming from that direction. So this is useful when you're trying to replicate a sun effect. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to enable overshoot. And as you can see, I can no longer control the hotspot because it makes no sense to control the hotspot. And if I test render this, there you go. We don't see where the light ends because it's not ending anywhere anymore. We only have control over the light's position. So, if we go back up and switch this to directional light, here's the big difference between spotlight and a directional light. A spotlight is one point and it gets wider as it goes away from the light source. The directional light will emit parallel light rays. So they're going to be parallel from beginning to finish. If I scroll down, we'll have pretty much the same parameters. We have the overshoot option, we have show cone, and we have hotspot and fall off. And we also can change the shape from circle to rectangle. So this is pretty much the same as it comes to shape. Let me render this out so you can see. There you go. The only real difference you're going to get here is on the way the shadows are going to behave. And we'll see that difference very clear in our next module. The last light type that we have here is the Omni light. So the Omni light simulates lighting coming from one specific point and is going to emit rays in every single direction from that point. So it's very similar to a light bulb. So it's a very small light source and there's light rays going in every single direction. So let me test this render so you can see. And this light doesn't have a target because is going to shoot rays in every direction so a target doesn't make a lot of sense here and also we don't have specific parameters because we don't need to control the overall cast of those rays they just are going in every single direction okay so now that we covered all the light types for in standard light in our next clip we're going to focus on the photometric lights so I'll see you guys then.